Hey everyone, been getting a lot of questions about uh, depth of field and f-stops and things like that. So I wanted to do a quick video and kind of illustrate how to describe depth of field and how you get a shallower depth of field. Um, also how f-stops, focal length, and distance from the background all play into that. So um, today it's super hot out, so we're gonna we're gonna do this inside. We have a we have a little model set up here in my kitchen. This is this is our subject. We're gonna we're gonna do a photo shoot of Suki's car from Too Fast Too Furious. All right, so here's the first setup. We are going to have the car close to the background. We have the camera. The camera is zoomed into 70 millimeters. We're gonna be on aperture priority and we're gonna shoot a series of shots at f2.8, f5.6, f8, and f11 and we'll see what they look like. All right, so that was the first series of shots. Here's what they look like. So here's f2.8, f5.6, f8, and f11. So you can see as our f-stop goes up, we get the higher number, more of the background becomes in focus. So the lower the number, like f2.8, that's gonna give you the most out of focus area in the background, or what they call bokeh, bokeh, whatever, however you say it. So that's our first setup. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull the car and the camera back to here, keep that same distance from the camera to the car, but it's gonna almost double, maybe triple, the distance of the car to the background. All right, so here's the next series of shots. So again, we have the same 14 inches between the camera and the car. We're still shooting at 70 millimeters. We're still on aperture priority mode. We're still gonna take those same F2.8, F5.6, F8, and F11 shots. But now the Here's the variable is before we were six inches from the background and now we're about 50 inches from the background. So you'll see how the background becomes even blurrier despite this not changing, just the fact that the background is so much further away. So here's the F2.8 shot, the F5.6, the F8, and the F11. And now let's compare the two. So let's compare the F2.8 before with the F2.8, 5.6, F8, and F11. So you can see how the distance from the background really makes a big difference. When we talk about depth of field and getting that blurry background that everyone really wants, there's a couple things to keep in mind. So first, you need to have distance from your subject to the background. That's probably the biggest thing. The second biggest thing is to shoot at the lowest possible f-stop that you have. So if your camera goes to 1.4, 2.8, 5.6, whatever the lowest number is, you wanna be shooting at that. That's gonna give you the best chance to blur out the background and separate your your subject from the background, which is ultimately your goal. You wanna bring as much focus into that subject as you can. Uh, the next thing is your focal length. So if you can get away with shooting a longer lens, you have the space to do that, that's gonna help you. So I know we weren't out in the field kind of shooting a real car today, but these, these techniques and tips and kind of fundamentals, these transfer into real world car shooting. So if you're looking for that shallow depth of field, you need to get your car away from the background, shoot down a road where you have an open background. You're not gonna get a blurry background right next to a brick wall. It's just not gonna happen. You don't have that kind of space. You'd be in a situation like our first setup. Um, you need some space between your car and the background to be able to blur it out. Also, shoot at the lowest f-stop possible. And then lastly, if you have a longer lens, give that a try. I think you'll find that you're able to generate better 
um, better background blur with that longer focal length. So hopefully this helps you. Hopefully you're able to implement some of these tips and techniques into your own shooting. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, otherwise, until next time, see ya.